All right. Thank you for watching. In uh, this video, what we're going to do is we're going to apply the rules over the last several videos to actually start to understand how we go about using um, the rules in deductive inferencing, how we make sense of whole line inferencing, how we apply the rules. Um, so let's get started. This is going to be whole line inferencing. Whole line inferencing. Okay, imagine that, if you will, the following. Remember we said, uh, I told you what modus was, right? And we'll abbreviate modus ponens as MP. And we said it's the claim that if you have A, then B, I have A, therefore I can get B. We can apply this to whole line inferencing. So for example, imagine that somewhere in my proof, uh, let's say at line, um, at line N, I have, I have the statement um, C. And let's say at another line, I have at line, at line P, so at line N, I have C. At line P, I have, let's say, the following. So, at line N, I have C. At line P, I have if C, then B. Well, what I can be able to do, let's say at some other line, line Z, what I'm able to do is I'm able to apply this uh, modus ponens to line N and line P. Why? I have if C, then D, all right? Nowhere in this, and let me make sure that this is clear, nowhere in this do I have D, um, variable D, isolated by itself. It's, it's connected with this conditional, right? If this happens, then this happens. If it's the case that I want to get this free, I want to be able to free up D by itself, the way that I release this variable, in a sense, is to apply modus ponens. How would I do it? Well, I would say, for example, I would say line N, and line P, line N and line P, I use MP, modus ponens, and then my resolve, my conclusion would be D, right? So I can get D, I can get this by applying modus ponens to these two lines. I have C, I have if C then D, which follows the same format, if A then B, A therefore B, if C then D, C therefore D. So what I've, did, what I've done is I've taken one line, this line, remember we're doing whole line inferencing, I've taken this line and I've said, well, if I have C then D, I have C, therefore I can have D isolated by itself, right? So now this D becomes isolated by itself and I can use that later in my line. So that would be the application of modus ponens to whole line inferencing. I can isolate this variable by applying modus ponens to these two lines. And in an actual proof, there would be numbers here. It wouldn't be line n. It would say, you know, this might be line 6, this might be line 10. And I would put here 6, 10 MP, which would tell me, which would tell um, the person reviewing the proof that modus ponens was applied to these two lines. Okay, so that shouldn't be... Uh, any diff difficult to understand. We can do the same with modus tollens. We can do the same with uh, uh, disjunctive syllogism or hypothetical syllogism, not difficult. What I want to incorporate, however, um, are some new ideas that I haven't discussed up until now. Um, and we'll do that. The first is conjunction elimination. So let's do the conjunction elimination. And then the second will be um, this, applying some of the replacement rules that we learned from the previous video in um, attempting to solve, solve some of our whole line inferencing problems. All right, so the first thing that we can do is I'm going to introduce the, the idea of uh, CE. 
It's abbreviated C E, and it's called conjunction elimination. Conjunction and elimination. All that that is saying is if I have on a particular line, line N, I have uh, A and B that I can apply LM and let's say we have line O and line P. In line O, I can apply conjunction elimination to line N. So what I would put is the line number N, and then I would put CE as my justification, and then I could either put A or B. So I'll put A on this line. Here, if I wanted to just get B by itself, I could apply the same thing. I would have B. How did I get B? I got B by applying conjunction elimination to line N. So that I've isolated my terms, right? So I have A and B on line N. I've isolated A by applying conjunction elimination to line N. And on line P, I was able to derive B. How was I able to derive B? By applying conjunction elimination to line N. Okay, so conjunction elimination really shouldn't be uh, that, that difficult. Um, what I'll do in the next example is we'll see how we can apply these rules after we've done uh, one of the replacement rules. Hold on, let me answer this phone call. I guess I won't answer the phone call. Okay, so let's look at... Let's look at a, a replacement rule. And what I want to do is I'm going to com combine some of what we've learned up until this point um, in addition with the rules that were given, I gave you guys five um, brief rules of inferencing. If I remember correctly, it was modus ponens, modus tollens, disjunctive syllogism, hypothetical syllogism, double negation. Some of the things that we learn in the construction of truth trees, and then also um, some of the rules that we discussed in the last video for replacement rules. Specifically, the replacement rule that I'm going to be using in this example is equivalence. 